Hello everyone. Today we are going to analyze this frame using direct stiffness matrix method. Before analyzing, let us see the frame one time. In this frame, there are two columns, column AB and column CD. Also, there is a beam BC. In the column AB, there is a point load 20 kN. It is acting towards the right side. In the column CD, there is a point load 20 kN. It is acting towards the left side. Both of the point loads are acting in the center. In the beam BC, we have a uniformly distributed load 15 kN per meter. It is acting for the full span. Length of the beam is 5 meter and the height of the columns is 4 meter. The moment of inertia for the columns is 2i and for the beam it is i. Now let us find the fixed end moments and the reactions. First let us find them in the column AB. In the column AB we have a point load 20 kN. It is acting in the center. The formula to find the fixed end moments are minus WL upon 8 and positive WL upon 8. Here W is 20 and L is 4. After the calculation for MFAB we are getting minus 10 and for MFBA we are getting 10. Now let us find the horizontal reactions HA and HB. In the column AB we have symmetrical loading. The point load is acting in the center. So we can easily find HA and HB. For that we have to divide 20 by 2. Finally for HA and HB we are getting 10 kN. Now let us find the fixed end moments and reactions in the beam BC. In the beam BC we have uniformly distributed load 15 kN per meter. It is acting for the full span. The formulas to find the fixed end moments are minus WL square upon 12 and positive WL square upon 12. Here W is 15 and L is 5. After the calculation, we are getting M of BC and M of CB. Now let us find the vertical reactions VB and VC. For that, we have to multiply the uniformly distributed load 15 with the distance 5 and then we have to divide that by 2. When we do that for VB and VC, we are getting 37.5. Now let us find the fixed end moments and reactions in the column CD. In the column CD we have a point load 20 kN which is acting in the center. The formulas to find the fixed end moments are minus WL upon 8 and positive WL upon 8. Here W is 20 and L is 4. After the calculation, we are getting M of CD and M of DC. Now let us find the horizontal reactions HC and HD. For that, we have to divide the load 20 by 2. When we do that, we are getting 10. Now let us find the kinematic indeterminacy of the frame. This frame is symmetrical with respect to the dimensions and loading. So there will be no sway but we will have the slope in the joints B and C. So the kinematic indeterminacy of the frame is 2. In the joint B we have theta B and in the joint C we have theta C. Now let us make the coordinates diagram. In this analysis, there are two coordinates. They are in the joint B and the joint C. Because in these joints only we have slope. We know that the coordinates indicate the moment. The moments should be placed in the clockwise direction. We know the formula to find the slope values. 
delta matrix is equal to k matrix inverse into p matrix minus pl matrix we know that in this analysis there are two coordinates so inside the delta matrix p matrix and pl matrix there will be two values the size of the stiffness matrix will be 2 cross 2 that means inside the matrix we will have two rows and two columns in this formula first let us find the pl matrix let us find pl1 our first coordinate is in the point b in the point b we have found two fixed end movements m of ba and m of bc we have to add both of them after adding we are getting minus 21.25 let us find pl2 our second coordinate is in the point c in the point c we have found two fixed end movements m of cb and m of cd we have to add both of them after adding we are getting 21.25 in this formula now let us find the p matrix first let us find p1 our first coordinate is in the point b in the point b there is no movement so p1 will be 0 let us find p2 our second coordinate is in the point c in the point c also there is no movement so p2 also will be 0 in this formula now we are going to find the stiffness matrix before making the stiffness matrix we have to make the element stiffness matrix in the columns and beam this is the element stiffness matrix for a span we have to memorize this matrix when we use the matrix we have to be very careful all of the movements are assumed to be acting in the clockwise direction if we get any negative value our assumption is incorrect then we can change the direction the horizontal reactions in the column a b are assumed to be acting towards the left side the vertical reactions in the beam bc are assumed to be acting upwards the horizontal reactions in the column cd are assumed to be acting towards the right side if we get any negative value then we can change the direction in the stiffness matrix the first row and the first column represent the first reaction in each of the spans the second row and the second column represent the first movement in each of the spans the third row and the third column represent the second reaction in each of the spans the fourth row and the fourth column represent the second movement in each of the spans now let us make the stiffness element matrix for the column ab the moment of inertia for the column ab is 2i so instead of ei we have to apply 2ei length of the column ab is 4 meter so instead of l let us apply 4 in all of the elements then let us multiply with 2 so that we will get this matrix for our own convenience let us keep ei outside we know that our first coordinate is in the point b in the point b we have the movement mba in the matrix mba represents the fourth row and the fourth column so let us denote the fourth row and the fourth column as one now let us strike out the unwanted rows and columns we do not want ha so let us strike out the first row and the first column we do not want mab so let us strike out the second row and the second column we do not want hb so let us strike out the third row and the third column in the matrix now we have only one member that is k11 we have ei outside so k11 is 2 into ei we will get 2 ei now let us make the element stiffness matrix 
in the beam BC, length of BC is 5. So instead of L, let us apply 5 in all of the members. Our first coordinate is in the point B. In the point B, we have the moment MBC. In the matrix, MBC represents the second row and the second column. So let us denote the second row and the second column as 1. Our second coordinate is in the point C. In the point C, we have the moment MCB. MCB represents the fourth row and the fourth column. So let us denote the fourth row and the fourth column as 2. Now let us strike out the unwanted rows and columns. We do not want VB. So let us strike out the first row and the first column. We do not want VC. So let us strike out the third row and the third column. This is K11. This is K12. This is K21. This is K22. Now let us make the element stiffness matrix in the column CD. The moment of inertia for the column CD is 2i. So instead of EI, we have to apply 2EI. Length of CD is 4. So instead of L, we have to apply 4 in all of the members. We know that our second coordinate is in the point C. In the point C, we have the moment MCD. In the matrix, MCD represents the second row and the second column. So let us denote the second row and the second column as 2. Now let us strike out the unwanted rows and columns. We don't want HC. So let us strike out the first row and the first column. We do not want HD. So let us strike out the third row and the third column. We do not want MDC. So let us strike out the fourth row and the fourth column. This is K22 from AB, BC and CD. We have made the stiffness matrix elements. Now using them we can make the stiffness matrix. In the stiffness matrix for K11 we have got two values. We have to add both of them. 2 plus 0 0.8 we will get 2.8. For K22 also, we have got two values. We have to add both of them. After adding, we will get 2.8. K12 is 0.4 and K21 is 0.4. In all of the members, EA is common. We can take it outside. In this formula, we have found everything. Let us apply them. We can add these two matrices. After adding, we are getting this matrix. We can take EI outside. EI inverse is 1 upon EI. For this matrix, we have to find the inverse. We can apply all of the values in the calculator and get the inverse. If you do not know how to find inverse in the calculator, see the description below. There is a link. You can click the link and watch the video. I have used the calculator and got the inverse. Now we can multiply these two matrices. After multiplying, we are getting the values of theta b and theta c. Now let us find the final moments and the reactions. First, let us find them in the column a b. For the column a b, we have made the element stiffness matrix. Let us apply that. Let us see how to make delta s matrix. In the column a b, in the point b, we have the first coordinate. In the point B, we have the moment MBA. For MBA, we have to apply the value of theta B. For the other values, we can apply 0. For the column AB, initially, we have found the fixed end moments and reactions. After the calculation, in the column AB, we are getting the reactions and moments. For MAB, we have got a negative value. That means our assumption is incorrect. MBA is actually acting in the anti-clockwise direction. Now let us find the final moments and reactions in the beam BC. 
for the beam BC, we have made the element stiffness matrix. Let us apply that. Now let us see how to make the displacement matrix. Our second coordinate is located in the point B. In the point B, we have the movement MBC. So for MBC, we have to apply the value of theta B. Our second coordinate is located in the point C. In the point C, we have the movement MCB. So for MCB, we have to apply theta C. For the other values, we can apply 0. In the beam BC, we have calculated the fixed end movements and reactions. Let us apply them. After the calculation, we are getting the reactions and the movements. For MBC, we have got a negative value. That means it is acting in the anti-clockwise direction. Now let us find the final movements and reactions in the column CD. First, let us apply the element stiffness matrix. Let us see how to make the displacement matrix. In the column CD, in the point C, we have the second coordinate. In the point C, we have the movement MCD. For MCD, we have to apply the value of theta C. For the other members, we can apply 0. In the column CD, we have calculated the fixed end movements and reactions. Let us apply them. After the calculation, we are getting the horizontal reactions and the movements. For MCD, we have got a negative value. That means it is acting in the anti-clockwise direction. In this analysis, we have calculated the movements and the reactions. Using the horizontal reactions and the load, we can make the shear force diagram in the column AB. Similarly, we can make the shear force diagram in the beam BC and in the column CD. We can draw the bending moment diagram by superposition method. Now we are going to end this session. Thank you for watching this video.